For today's video, we are going to talk about how to evaluate trigonometric expressions and we are going to explain everything in details. So what are the things that we need to remember in evaluating trigonometric expression? So let's say for example, if we are going to have a Cartesian coordinate plane, this will be our x-axis and this will be our y-axis. So this is 0 degree, this is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, this is 270 degrees, and lastly, this is 360 degrees. So as you can see, we have x and y axis. It divides the Cartesian coordinate plane into four quadrants. So this is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So in quadrant 1, the signs are positive and positive, positive value for x and positive value for y. And in quadrant 2, we have negative value for x and positive value for y. And in quadrant 3, they are both negative. In quadrant 4, we have positive value for x and negative value for y. So how can we say if the given angle is located in quadrant 1? So if the given angle is greater than 0 but less than 90 degrees, therefore the given angle is located in quadrant 1. And if it is located in quadrant 2, the given angle is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. And in quadrant 3, the given angle should be greater than 180 degrees but less than 270 degrees. And in quadrant 4, the angle will be greater than 270 degrees but less than 360 degrees. And always remember, cosine is represented as x and sine is represented as y. And there are four formulas that you need to remember in each quadrant. So in quadrant 1, the formula will be the given angle, that is theta. In quadrant 2, that is 180 degrees minus theta. In quadrant 3, that is theta minus 180 degrees. And in quadrant 4, that is 360 degrees minus theta. On the first example, we have sine 120 degrees. Since 120 is located in the second quadrant, let us use the formula in the reference angle. In the second quadrant, that is 180 degrees minus theta. So this will be 180 degrees minus 120 degrees it will give us 60 degrees. So the reference angle of 120 degrees is 60 degrees. Therefore, it will give us sine 60 degrees. And the value of sine 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And since 120 degrees is located in quadrant 2, that is y, and the value of y quadrant 2 is positive, therefore our answer is positive square root of 3 over 2. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have cosine 315 degrees. Since 315 degrees is located in quadrant 4, it's between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. Let us use the formula in quadrant 4 in the reference angle that is 360 degrees minus theta. So let us have 360 degrees minus 315 degrees. It will give us 45 degrees. So the reference angle of 315 degrees is 45 degrees. So therefore, it will give us cosine 45 degrees. And the value of cosine 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Since 315 is located in quadrant 4, the sine in quadrant 4 that is positive and negative. Positive value for x and negative value for y. 
And since cosine is represented as x, the value or the sine of cosine in quadrant 4 is positive. Therefore, our answer will be positive square root of 2 over 2. And this will be our answer. On example number 3, we have tangent 270 degrees. So how can we find the value of tangent 270 degrees? Let's say for example, if we are going to have a Cartesian coordinate plane, that is x-axis and this will be our y-axis and we have a circle located at the origin with a radius which is equal to 1. So if radius is equal to 1, the location of this point is 1, 0. And the location of this point is 0, 1. And the location of this point is negative 1, 0. And this point, that is 270 degrees, that is 0, negative 1. Since we have 0 and negative 1, so this will be the value of cosine and this will be the value of sine. And in our given, we have tangent 270 degrees. So, since tangent is equal to sine 270 degrees over cosine 270 degrees. So, the value of sine 270 degrees is negative 1 and the value of cosine 270 degrees is 0. Therefore, negative 1 divided by 0 is undefined. And this will be our answer. On example number 4, we have cosecant negative 240 degrees. So as you can see, we have negative degree measure. So if we are going to have a negative degree measure, the first thing that we are going to do is to eliminate the negative sign in the given degree measure. So let us have negative 240 degrees. So all we have to do is to add 360 degrees. So negative 240 degrees plus 360 degrees, it will give us 120 degrees. So we can write this one as cosecant 120 degrees. And 120 degrees is located in quadrant 2. It's between 90 and 180 degrees. We can use the formula in the second quadrant for the reference angle that is 180 degrees minus theta. So let us have 180 degrees minus 120 degrees. It will give us 60 degrees. So the reference angle of cosecant 120 is cosecant 60 degrees. And the reciprocal of cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. So we can write this one as 1 over cosecant 60 degrees, that is sine 60 degrees. So let us have 1 over the value of sine 60 degrees in quadrant 2, that is positive square root of 3 over 2. And to simplify, this is 2 multiplied by 1, that is 2 over square root of 3. And to eliminate the radical sign on the denominator, we can multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of 3. So 2 multiplied by 1 square root of 3, that is 2 square root of 3. And square root of 3 times square root of 3, that is square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is Three. And this will be our answer. On example number 5, we have secant negative 135 degrees. So again, we have negative degree measure angle. So this time, let me give you another way on how we can solve this kind of problem. So if we are going to have a negative degree measure angle, we can also use the add and even trigonometric functions. So let's start with the Add trigonometric function. So if we are going to have sine negative x, negative x that is the given negative degree measure angle. So this will be negative 
sine x. If you are going to have cosecant negative x, it will give us negative cosecant x. If you're going to have tangent negative x, this is negative tangent x. And if you're going to have cotangent negative x, it will give us negative cotangent x. And that is for the ad trigonometric functions. And this time, let us have the even. If you're going to have cosine negative x, the result will be cosine x. And if you're going to have secant negative x, that is secant x. Since our given is secant, that is even trigonometric function, so we can write secant negative 135 degrees as secant 135 degrees. Since 135 degrees is located in quadrant 2, it's between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, we can use the formula 180 degrees minus theta. 180 degrees minus 135 degrees, that is 45 degrees. So the reference angle of 135 degrees is 45 degrees. So we can write this one as secant 45 degrees. And we all know that the reciprocal of secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. And 135 degrees is located in quadrant 2. The signs are negative and positive. So negative value for cosine and positive value for sine. So we can write secant 45 degrees as 1 over cosine 45 degrees. And let us have 1 over Cosine 45 degrees, that is square root of 2 over 2. And since we have 135 degrees, which is located in quadrant 2, therefore we have negative square root of 2 over 2. And to simplify, let us have 2 multiplied by 1. It will give us negative 2 over square root of 2. And to simplify, we can rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 2. So negative 2 multiplied by 1 square root of 2. That is negative 2 square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2. That is positive 2. And we can cancel this one. It will give us negative square root of 2. And this will be our answer. On example number 6, we have cotangent radian over 4. So as you can see, we have the given radian. So the first thing that we are going to do is to convert the given radian into degree. So if we are going to have radian over 4, to convert this one into degrees, let us multiply this one as 180 degrees over radian. So we can cancel this one. It will give us 180 degrees divided by 4. It will give us 45 degrees. So therefore, we can try cotangent radian over 4 as cotangent 45 degrees. And we all know that cotangent is equal to cosine 45 degrees over sine 45 degrees. So the value of cosine 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. And the value of sine 45 degrees is also square root of 2 over 2. And if you're going to divide this one, it will give us 1. And this will be our answer. On our last example, we have tangent negative 11 radian over 6. So as you can see, we have negative radian measure. So to simplify this one, we can use the idea of add trigonometric function. So if you're going to have tangent negative x this will be negative tangent x so we can write this one as negative tangent 11 radian over 6 and let us convert 11 radian over 6 into degrees by multiplying 180 degrees over 
radian. So we can cancel this one. It will give us 11 times 180 degrees divided by 6. 180 degrees divided by 6, that is 30 degrees. And 11 times 30 degrees, that is 330 degrees. So let us have negative tangent 330 degrees. 330 degrees is located in quadrant 4. It's between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. So we can use the formula in quadrant 4. That is 360 degrees minus the given theta or the given measure. So this will be 360 degrees minus 330 degrees. That is 30 degrees. So let us write this one as negative tangent. 30 degrees. Since tangent is equal to sine over cosine, let us write this one as negative and then sine 30 over cosine 30. And since 330 degrees is located in quadrant 4, the signs are positive and negative. Positive for cosine and negative for sine. So let us have negative and then the value of sine 30 degrees in quadrant 4 that is negative 1 half and cosine 30 degrees therefore we have a positive that is um, square root of 3 over 2. So let us simplify negative times negative is positive. So 1 multiplied by 2, that is 2, over 2 times square root of 3, that is 2 square root of 3. We can cancel this one, that is 1 over square root of 3. We can rationalize by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 3. So this will be square root of 3 over 3. And this will be our answer. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.